Good evening students, this is Manas Patnaik, your friend and tutor. And in today's video, we are going to be solving all the problems that appeared in the April 2023 Engineering Graphics Question Paper from the University of Pune or SPPU. Okay, let's take a look at the questions very, very quickly. Here we go. How many questions, sir? There are as many as eight questions. Okay, if you just take a look at the maximum marks, it is 50 and you can obtain full marks. Let me tell you. Okay. Um, so there are choices either you can go for question one or two three or four five or six or you can go for seven or eight that means you effectively have to make only four drawings corresponding to four questions right uh, let me just briefly tell you from which topics the questions have been asked the first question is from the topic of uh, conic sections second one is from uh, cyclical curves this is from orthographic projection this is also from orthographic projection but there is a slightly different concept okay concept of sectional orthographic then question number five is from isometric drawings where you need to create the isometric view it, it sort of looks like 3d uh, i mean in one single view you can see the length width as well as the height of any uh, machine component or any 3d object and uh, going ahead problem six is also based on isometric drawing problem seven and eight are from development of surfaces of hollow solids khokle solids uh, by the way this video is hindi mein bhi uplabd hai aap chahe to mere nayi channel btech plus mein jaakar ke is video ko dekh sakte hain waise uska link main niche description mein laga dunga theek hai hindi angrezi dono chalte rehna do aur yahan se okay now <coughs> let me take you to my application and let me guide you how you can access the pdf solution to all of this these questions here we go first of all you need to uh, either you can access all the solution through the web also right i'll give you the instruction in the description don't worry if you still haven't downloaded my application the link is right there in the description it is an apk link so it may happen that when you click on that link the if you have got an android device it may say that this app may be harmful for your device don't worry it is absolutely safe to download and also install the application take my word okay once you install the application go to the courses section go to engineering graphics click over here and if you watch there is already a discount of 400 rupees on this course if you want to enroll right if you want to organize if you want to do a thorough preparation i would suggest you to enroll in this course and uh, learn under my guidance all the videos are recorded whenever you want to learn any particular concept you can text me via the chat there is a chat box also available you can text me directly and schedule a meeting right anyway uh, as far as the pdf notes are concerned go inside the contents tab here come downwards and there inside this folder of university wise content click on sppu pune university and here again scroll downwards here you'll find one folder previous year question papers click on it click on this as you can see i have kept it unlocked for all my students on youtube click on this immediately a pdf will load and this pdf is the solution to 2023 engineering graphics paper right entire solution along with the question paper you don't have to worry one bit okay so whatever i have done on the screen that is available on this pdf also and i would strongly suggest all of you it is my request to to share my channel with your friends and classmates so that they can also benefit also share the uh, apk link of my application with your friends and all your classmates right make sure you get good marks in this engineering graphics paper there there is also one more course running which is engineering mechanics and uh, it's it's very good to take a look some of the videos have been kept unlocked so that you guys can decide and enroll accordingly okay so with that being said we can go ahead and solve all these solutions one by one chun chun ke sawala banayenge here we go okay what to do sir i think let me read the question let me solve question number one draw an ellipse by rectangular method if the major and minor axis are 160 and 100 160 is the major minor is 100 how do you do this let's go ahead 160 by 100 so the best way to start is to make a rectangle 160 by 100 here we go okay i'll be doing the dimensions also don't worry here it is okay what is half of 160 sir it is uh, 80 so at a distance of 80 either from the left or from the right 
make a point and pass a vertical line through it this way. Similarly, at a distance of 50, half of 100, pass a horizontal line. Now you can see that this rectangle has been divided into four separate rectangles, right? There are four quarters. So quarter limbs will be here, another quarter will be here, another quarter will be here, and another quarter will be here. I'll be making a very good diagram, don't worry. Now what to do, sir? Uh, the best way to approach such questions is, if you go for three parts over here, you have to go for three parts here also, right? And in that case, you are going to have two points only for passing an ellipse through these points. If you go for four parts, you have to go for four parts along this horizontal line also. Then in that case, you are going to have as many as three points. So number of parts, uh, if the number of parts is n, then the number of points that you achieve is n minus one. That's the logic. I am going to go for five parts, both along this vertical and along this horizontal, five parts. If you make five parts, then you are going to get as many as four points so that uh, you can easily pass an ellipse through these four points. More the number of points you have, uh, the easier it gets, the comfortable it gets for you to pass an ellipse through them. Okay, so always go for more number of parts. Here you can go with five parts. How do you do this, sir? Take a look at this point. Okay, and now pass a line, any angle, don't worry, just pass a line. Keep your scale over here. At equal distances of 10 millimeters, keep on marking points. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Why 5? Sir, because we have to go for 5 parts. That is why 5 arcs or 5 points. Don't make arcs, simply make points. If I make point, you won't be able to see them. Okay, that's why I've made an arc. Keep your mini drafter. Join with this. Okay, you need to keep your mini drafter like this. Agreed? Okay, sir. Once you keep your mini drafter like this, there is a screw over here. And what you guys need to do is you need to tighten this screw so that the mini drafter gets locked along this position. Once that is done, once the mini drafter is locked, you need to bring it to this fourth point, draw a line, third point, draw a line, second point, draw a line, first point, draw a line, and then number. Easy. So how many parts? One, two, three, four, five. Done, sir. Very easy. In the same fashion, you have to divide this portion of this quarter also into five equal parts the process is same draw a line any angle any length but you need to mark points at a distance of 10 millimeters start one two three four five fifth point with this point draw keep your drafter like this okay uh, lovely you've got a screw over here yes sir then tighten the screw yes sir is the drafter locked yes sir bring it to this fourth point draw a line third point second point first point and number done sir very easy now keep your pencil and scale along this point connect this point with four three two and one all of them is this done okay sir now focus on this very point you need to pass a line which actually passes through one dash and intersects this line through one similarly pass a line which passes through two dash and it intersects the line which is this two line okay you can also say this is a let's say c c two line in the same fashion pass a line through three dash okay such that it intersects the line c3 somewhere here i am sure that you've understood this let me do this this is going to give you p1 that's p2 for you that's p3 and that's p4 once you've got all of these points you can straight away start by creating your ellipse but i would suggest you to complete the construction process okay and then start creating the ellipse anyway some of the teachers actually uh they 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 get pissed off <laughs> if you just apply the construction in one quarter and do not apply the same to all the quarters okay if uh, this is the case with your teacher then you have to apply the same construction process over to this side an exact mirror image right four parts over here oh, five parts over here then five parts over here then joining the lines like this uh, you can do that right I'm, I'm absolutely cool with this apply the construction process on any one quarter and then flip and enjoy i'll show you what flip and reflect is here we go these are the points that we're interested in through these points draw vertical lines like this right extend these lines below all of this has to be done very very carefully very gently with the help of 
a 4H pencil. All the construction where we are doing is 4H pencil. Just the dimensioning and the lettering that we are doing is H pencil. Done, sir. What? Extend in the downward direction. Keep one leg of our compass pencil like at P1, steel end over here. Flip, it will intersect somewhere here. This is going to give you the new point. Okay, so what we've basically done is we have reflected P1 about this horizontal and we get P5. Similarly, we have reflected P2 about the horizontal and we've got P6. I'm sure you understood this. Now, just like we made this vertical and reflected them about the horizontal, now we are going to make the horizontal and reflect them about this vertical. Okay, for that, let me extend this. Keep the pencil leg at P4, steel end at over here. Flip, it will intersect somewhere here. This is going to give you a new point that is P9. In the same fashion, you can obtain P10, P11, P12. And now, uh, I, I think you know what the next step is going to be. Either you can flip these points over to the right hand side, or you can flip these points with respect to the horizontal down below. It's completely your choice. Let me drop vertical. Okay. In the same fashion, you're going to get point. 13, 14, 15, and 16. Easy. Okay. Now, what's up? Mm, what we'll do now? Do I have a blue color? Okay. Red, green, green. Let me use a green color. So, keep your pencil over here. What pencil? H pencil. Okay. Our objective was to create an ellipse where the major and minor axes are 160 and 100. Okay, let me do that. When you start by creating, I mean, when you start creating an ellipse, right? First of all is a little bit of exercise of your wrist, right? Because this is going to play a huge role. And uh, start the curve, making sure that it is sticking to this line. Let me zoom in. Start the curve, originate the curve. Initially, it is going to stick to this line and then slightly divert it away from this vertical line. Right. Let me show this to you. This way. Uh, this way. Pass. 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 My wrists are locked now. Okay. I need to change the position. This way. Keep on sticking it with the line. Sticking, sticking, sticking. Now keep it away. Keep it away. Let it pass through P9 and so on. I mean, this is the usual approach. Okay. Make sure that your hands are not shivering. Uh, this should be steady and the wrist should flow. Should flow. Right? Okay, let me do this. Done. Ellipse created. The portion which should be dark is the ellipse and the rest portion should be kept light. Make sure all the construction is initially done with the help of a 4 H pencil. This, 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 everything is 4H, whereas this ellipse is H pencil, this writing work is H pencil, this dimensioning is H pencil, this dimension line is H pencil, this extension line is H pencil. Okay. Now I am sure you know how to do this. So here we have this question number two. Draw a cycloid of a rolling circle of diameter 40 mm. Assume the point P is away from the base. Now, some of the students who have not read the chapter well they'll assume that uh, we need to create a cycloid that has been clearly written and uh, the rolling circles diameter is 40 mm so they are going to apply the entire process of cycloid construction but this is a special case of a cycloid so what is that special case please read this sentence assume the point p is away from the base the pure cycloid is when the point p is exactly on the circumference if it is inside it's a case of inferior trochoid if it is outside or away from the base, it is a case of superior trochoid. I'll show you how it's done. And basically, this was the confusion. And you also need to assume how far you are going to keep this point P, right? Assume suitable data if necessary. Okay. So let me just begin the solution of the problem. And uh, here we go. Remember, 40 mm is the diameter. So the radius is going to be 20 mm. First of all, kick off by creating a circle 20 mm radius. Done. Very easy. Now, somewhere here, if you remember, I mean, we used to make cycloids. Where is the black color? We basically used to keep a track of this very point. Okay. And let's say that this, this 
circle green color circle is going to roll along this this straight path we kept a track of this very point this is what you call a cycloid isn't it our point is going to be away from the base let's say our point is somewhere here okay in this case the profile form would be of this sort this is what you call a superior trochoid i am going to do this very very nicely for you don't worry so let me select this point at a distance of let's say 30 millimeters from the center agreed okay now with c naught as the center and with this much as the radius you can create one more circle like this done okay before we make the circle let me tell you something this green colored rolling circle has to roll it has to roll onto something okay and we are going to make a straight line over here sir what is the length of the line sir uh, we are actually going for one revolution in one revolution this distance is going to be equal to 2 pi r or you can say 2 into r will make a diameter you can also write it as pi into d sir d happens to be 40 so this is going to be equal to 40 pi so please do the math this is going to work out as 125.66 millimeters so this straight path will be equal to 125.66 is this clear to everyone yes sir now what <clears throat> how can we proceed now okay so far so good let's go ahead the next thing we'll do is we with c naught as center and with this much as the radius we are going to pass a circle through this done sir now you have to divide this circle into first into four parts and then into eight parts here it is very easy now start the numbering let's start from over here one two three four five six seven and let's say this is eight you can also write this as eight okay now what uh, now what you need to do is first of all you need to set your mini drafter okay over here along this horizontal line done sir then right here you have a screw tighten the screw by rotating it anti-clockwise so that your mini drafter is locked in this orientation once that is done you need to bring your mini drafter to point p then point one then point two then point three then point four and keep on making a series of horizontal and parallel lines yes sir this is easy we can do this now what you need to do is using the line division technique using the line division technique you need to divide this line ab into eight equal parts okay so this is very easy this is what you need to do and then you need to send these points you need to send these points or transfer these points over to this side right so that this is c0 this becomes c1 this becomes c2 c3 and so on until you reach c8 line division technique is something that i have explained in the previous video also in question number one okay go ahead and watch that it's, it's a very very basic case now <clears throat> you need to make use of a compass what do we need to do sir uh, basically you need to take this much as the radius sir how much is this much this by the way is equal to 30 millimeter yes sir so you need to take 30 millimeter as the radius in your compass and then with a c1 as the center please note with c1 as the center and on a line passing through this one and on a line passing through this one you need to cut an arc like this okay once again let me let me reiterate with c1 as the center and on this line passing through this one you need to cut an arc arc is radius uh, arc is having a radius of 30 done this is going to give you point p1 i can write this as p1 now you need to take c2 as the radius okay once again c2 as the center and on a line passing through two this is a line passing through two you need to cut an arc again so it will cut somewhere here the radius is 30 millimeters this is going to give you p2 let me write this now with c2 or done p2 now with c3 as center and on this line passing through three you need to cut another arc this is going to give you p3 let me write this as p3 in the same fashion if you take the c4 as center uh, this is going to be a touch and go case this is going to be your point p or in the same fashion you can have p5 on a line passing through 5 p6 on a line passing through 6 p7 somewhere here on a line passing through 7 let me show this to you this is p7 
that's p6 that's p5 and finally over here you watch if you take this c8 as center and if you try to make an arc it is going to be just a touch and go case this point over here that is your point 8 p8 you can call it as p8 you can call it as p0 also it's your choice okay let's say this is p0 this also i mean it is back to its original position just after one revolution when you join all of these points in proper sequence what you have is a beautiful curve popularly known as a superior trochoid it's a special case of a cycloid okay the rolling circle is moving along a straight line i know that but the point that we are tracking it is outside the circle not on the circumference had it been inside what we would have created uh, is uh, uh, would be uh, inferior trochoid right inferior trochoid point is inside superior trochoid point is outside as in this case i hope you all have understood how to make the construction and as far as uh, pencil work is concerned please take a look at this there it is this is going to be your pencil work right please please check these arcs have been made with the help of a 3h pencil you can also go for a 4h pencil okay but hold it lightly these lines again 4h pencil ah but when you make this curve you need to use an edge pencil okay thick and dark please make sure that you follow all of these instructions very very uh, honestly right problem number three and let me just show this to you figure shows a pictorial view of an object okay this sort of is a 3d view where you can see all the dimensions length width and the height by using first angle method of projection draw front view in the direction of x okay so this is x and from here you can see the front all right so that decides your front view L top view from over here and the left hand side view from this side give dimensions in all the views it's very important okay let me straight away move to this slide okay uh the first thing the first suggestion to all of you is to start your drawing by using a 3h or a 4h pencil and use it very very lightly that is the first suggestion once you are done with all the outlines you can then override those lines with the help of a h pencil i'll show you how this can be done with the help of this presentation here we go first of all take a look at this object from a 3d perspective this is going to be fun watch this video right till the end i'll give you the full demonstration let me just start here we go let me rotate the object slightly so that you guys can have a better understanding of the different profiles so there are two holes drilled there is a this u shape over here let me take a look at it from over here that is from the front here we go wonderful let me take a look from the top you'll see an inverted u okay and also the left hand side view which has been asked and this is the left hand side view and you can clearly see that there are two rectangles of different colors right i won't be coloring my drawing uh, what i'm interested in is just the outlines and the hidden features which uh, we use dashed lines to represent can we go ahead yes sir we can and we should what you should initially draw, uh, draw is your partition lines these are going to be your partition lines first of all done okay sir now listen to this very carefully let's say your object has got some base at a height of 10 mm from the hp right and for that what i'll do is make a line above this distance happens to be 10 mm and this also what is this sir the back of your object will be at a certain distance from the vertical plane and that distance is shown over here right in the same way the the one face of your object right hand side face or left hand side face will be at a certain distance from the profile plane and that is going to be 10 millimeters so 10 millimeters 10 millimeters just follow the steps eventually uh, as you go on drawing the object you'll understand its features much more practically now let me get the object in front of you here we go how much of a length length from the left to the right assuming you are viewing the object from over here how much of a length do you observe sir uh, we can clearly see this distance is 32 the radius of the circular profile itself 
then from here to this that means from center of one circle to the center of other circle you can clearly see the distance between them is 114 and then you've got this distance again it is nothing but the radius of the semicircular profile and this is 32 so 32 plus 32 and the distance in between the centers is 114 please do the math 4 plus 2 6 plus 2 is 8 and then 1 3 4 5 6 7 1 178 is the total length that means from the leftmost point to the rightmost point the distance between these two points happens to be 178 let me erase now okay i'll write down all the things don't worry secondly how much of a height do you see sir we can see that this is the height this that is this is equivalent to sir 45 okay you can you can tally it from over here also this is 45 agreed sir sir what about this distance do you know how much this foundation is sir this is equivalent to 19 so 45 plus 19 is going to give you the height as 45 55 60 minus 1 64 64 so the length is 178 the height is 64 done and please note you may commit a mistake a small error over here the foundation is slightly thin somewhere in between and it is a bit thicker over here okay in these semicircular portions it is a bit thicker 19 mm 19 mm and in between it's 13 mm so please note that these things reflect perfectly in your drawing done uh, as far as the width is concerned when you take a look at it from over here you are going to see the width also from the top also it's visible so this is fairly simple this width is equal to double the radius that is 64 okay so the width has been given as 64 the dimension also has been given don't worry okay again remember length sir 178 height sir 64 width sir 64 so you have all the data the first thing is to create three rectangles in the first rectangle listen to me top view okay sir front view okay sir left hand side view okay sir in the top view you are going to see a rectangle 178 by 64 yes sir in the front view that means 178 by 64 okay sir in the front view you are going to see a rectangle 178 by 64 so that's 178 sir and this height of the rectangle is going to be 64 and sir uh, uh, in the left hand side view we are going to see a rectangle of this is going to be 64 and this is going to be 64 64 by 64 please take a screenshot i want all of you to take a screenshot done okay let me erase let me get back to business three rectangles in one go here it is you know the dimensions 178 64 178 64 and in the side view 64 by 64 done okay nice all right sir now what now now comes the confusing part let me switch on the main diagram once again Javitas. from where shall we begin usually i suggest my students to go with the top view although it's not mandatory you can go with the front view also it is your choice okay play with it right so we can clearly see that there are these two centers one center has to be somewhere here okay between these two centers there is a distance of one one four and if you watch carefully this distance from the extreme left this distance happens to be 32 so agreed sir and sir this distance also is 32 do you agree <laughs> yes sir this is also 32 from both the ends you can take the distance as 32 and mark these two centers and if i can zoom into this you'll realize that this small circle over here has a diameter equivalent to 22 diameter is 22 therefore the radius is going to be half of that that is 11 agreed okay 32 from the right 32 from the left mark two centers and then make two circles having radius of 11 millimeters wonderful let me do that in one go and here it is easy okay so the distance between these two centers is sir this is 114 and this 
circle is having a radius equal to 11 this also is having the same radius equal to 11 very easy sir uh, what prompted you to make this line thicker right please note uh, these thicker lines correspond to edge pencil whereas all the lines that i have made previously all of these lines have been made using the 4 edge pencil keep it very very light okay let me let me just give you a brief explanation about these lines uh, one thing that you must note that it is in line with the centers this also in line with the centers and now here comes the justification in line with the centers okay yeah in line with the centers and somewhere here i cannot show you the exact place this line then this line and then somewhere 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 here then this line then this line then this line this is what you are seeing from the top top these are the lines that you see okay let them be shown with the help of one single straight line at the back and at the front easy yes sir so far so good now what now please note what we'll do is we'll actually mark a center line or a center at the back this is 64 sir in totality so 32 to the left and then down by 45 okay how much is this sir uh, no 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 not down what are we making we are making the top view right okay so in the top view you are going to see this we'll make a center and then we'll go 32 to the left you can also go 32 to the right also no problem let me use a black color for the left inside portion then we need to move in this direction how much is this sir this obviously 64 this is very easy then we have to move in this direction how much is this sir this is 13 by the way 13 13 13 all of them in fact and then how much is this sir let me make the arrow so that you guys can visualize it properly if you watch done sir from the distance between these two points is 64 so 64 minus 13 will give you the value as 51 so so this has to be 51 and then you can move towards the right hand side by a distance of 38 millimeters so please remember 32 64 13 51 how much 32 64 13 51 okay here, here we go mark the center how much to the left sir 32 to the left draw a line full 64 okay this is full 64 then 13 mm to the right this is 13 mm to the right then 51 remember then 38 remember down again 51 then 13 again okay and then join it back very very simple okay let me switch it on so there is this semicircular profile which has this as the center so the radius has to be 32 which has been given with this point as the center keep the pencil end of your compass over here and the steel end of your compass at the center rotate anti-clockwise and that's the semicircle apply the same process over to this side clockwise done top view is done now we should think about the front view how do we do this sir? <laughs> okay uh, first of all the best thing to do or uh, the best way to approach is to get points get lines from all of these points all of these points in the upper direction very easy again what pencil are you using sir 4 edge pencil gentle soft okay barely visible lines now what take a look what can you see sir this curved portion will look like a straight line from the front it will look like a straight line okay and here also this portion will be visible sir uh, from the front this portion will be visible i mean these two lines are having different lengths this is having a length of 45 whereas this is having a length of 51 please note 64 minus 13 will give you 51 this is 38 this is again 51 sir sir this is 13 okay this is 45 sir and then this straight go have to go straight the guidelines are going to help you which we just which we have just drawn let me show that to you these are the guidelines right the projector lines just do it okay and from here on upwards 13 mm to the right 
13 mm to the left i mean these guidelines are going to help you just stop over there then down by 51 millimeters if you don't want to go down if you want to mark this point this point is actually 13 millimeter is at a height of 13 millimeters so that also is a reference right and then join done sir this line we can understand what about this line sir why do you darken this line the bottom one yes sir we we understood this is the top one right you from where are you looking sir we are looking at it from the front and that's the line which i have just drawn easy peasy that's all uh anything else i'm about to draw something can you observe it here it is again here it is <laughs> do write down in the comments very very honestly have you been able to what have have you been able to work out or observe what i've just made hmm? take a look take a look i have made a pair of dashed lines this is a pair of dashed lines you can clearly see that the circle the leftmost edge rightmost edge so hidden features represented by dashed lines and so is the case over to this side also hidden features by dashed lines right so they are going to be visible to you i am going to make these construction lines even much more transparent you guys can do the same by using your pencil gently your 3 edge pencil or your 4 edge pencil done okay um anything else i think we are done with the front view and the top view now let's make lines we already have lines through this lines through this this let me do this in a civilized way okay and more let me have lines through these points and then rotate them by 45 degrees use a, a mini drafter for this purpose you can use a compass also okay not a compass but a protractor right project them in the vertically upward direction and then now try to work out what you need to do take a look now where are we looking from sir from the left hand side yeah okay so there is this slant edge that you can see yes will you be able to see this from the left hand side no sir this is the isometric view right so this is that slant edge i am talking about it is a hidden feature especially from the left hand side it is a hidden feature so it has to be given respect in the form of a dashed line will you do that yes sir we surely can how sir 13 mm from the left and 13 mm from the bottom that is exactly how we are going to mark these extreme points let me do that 13 mm this is the left 13 mm from the left and sir 13 mm from the bottom and we are going to make our dashed line done very easy secondly if you watch there are these two rectangles that you will see one rectangle one and then there is another rectangle which you'll see uh it looks like a semicircle okay i agree but it would i mean it is a semicircle in fact but when you look at it from over here from the left hand side it would look like a rectangle so rectangle one and rectangle two and uh, these are those rectangles let me mark them clearly rectangle one and rectangle two is this clear to everyone i hope it is and then there is this uh drill it starts from over here and it ends here okay you can you can match starts here ends here right so it's a feature again that is hidden therefore dashed lines that's the complete diagram if you can make this diagram this question is of 16 marks you are surely going to get 12 marks why are you deducting the marks four marks the reason being very simple because you have not used the center lines okay so wherever you see circular profiles use center lines uh, like this right and your work should be in this fashion right the construction lines should be barely visible okay use the pencil very softly and these are the center lines everywhere everywhere right and uh, if you can make this i'm going to give you 14 out of 16 happy no sir we want more or if you want more you need to do uh, you need to put in a lot more efforts you need to dimension it something like this if you can make this you nobody can stop you from getting 16 out of 16 look this this examination is of 15 marks and this single question is going to give you 16 marks okay 50 marks is the uh, total engineering graphics paper out of which you can obtain 16 marks from this very single problem so it is very very profitable to solve questions based on isometric projection and as well as this topic that is orthographic projection problem number four so this is of 16 marks it's an easier problem 
I think we you can crack this very very easily. Uh, so what's been given is this pictorial view of the object. By first angle method of projection, draw the front view in the direction of x. So this is the for the front, and then you need to make the top view also. That is part B of the question, and then you've got sectional left hand side view along the symmetry of the object. Okay, the the object actually is symmetrical about the a vertical plane which passes through somewhere here, right? Exactly the center along this length, you can pass a vertical plane through it. And then you need to create this sectional left hand side view. How to do that and much more? Keep watching this video. This is going to be very interesting. First of all, let me just show you a 3D arrangement wherein we are going to rotate this object and let's visualize it properly. Take a look. How's it? How does it look? Okay, so this is how the object looks. It would be better if you can take a look from the front over here. Nice. Done. Visualized. Now let's take a look at it from the top. Done. Again, now take a look from the left hand side. This is the LHSV. Now what we are basically interested in is creating the sectional. Okay, so the section is going to pass through the center somewhere here. Passing through the symmetry. And this is how it looks. One sec. Let me show you the section. Okay, by the way, we are making the left hand side view. And if in the left hand side view, you can see the section. Yes, sir. In the left hand side view, if you can see the section, that basically qualifies as the sectional left hand side view. So this is exactly what we'll be creating. You can see this grade portion over here. This is for the hatching. Okay. And this is what, what you'll be able to visualize from the left hand side. Okay. So section plus left hand side view makes the sectional left hand side view. Done. Okay. I think we can go ahead and uh, start making the solution to this case. A very interesting problem. And this is the visualization. Shall we go ahead? Here we go. The first thing is to create the partition lines and here they are. Easy. Now take a look at the object and try to work out the dimensions, the maximum length, the maximum width and the height. Done. So the length happens to be 60. You can see this. The height is 55. Here we go. And oh, even before that, you have to, I mean, how high is the object? So it is at a height of 10 mm. The base of the object is at a height of 10 mm. The back of the object is at a distance of 10 mm from the vertical plane. I mean, these dimensions, uh, you can decide. You can assume. Okay. Don't take it more than 10. To the left and to the right. Done. All of these lines can be made lighter. I'll do it. You can't make it lighter once you make it dark. So better to start your work, initial the work with a 3H pencil and hold it very, very lightly. Then, as I said, this is 60 by 55. That is the length by height, 60 by 55. And then as far as the top view is concerned, in the top view, you'll see 60 by 40. So that's 60 by 40. And thirdly, in the side view, it's 40 by 55. So this is 40 by 55. Done. Now, how do we proceed? If you take a careful look from the front view, you will definitely see this rectangle. This X mark is for the front. Agreed? Yes, I will see this. So why wait? Let's make it 60 by 40. 40 or something else. 20. 20. Okay, done, sir. Now what? Sir, these lines are also going to be visible. The true length of the lines won't be seen. What you will see is the apparent view. This is the length that you will see. Okay, this is this line will look like a line of this much length, right? Until you reach here. Okay. And then you need to go down, then this way, this way, sort of a U shape. Let's do it. Both of them, in fact, this spacing is 10, right? This is 20. Total half of it will be 10. 20 total half of it will be 10. Let's do it. Easy. Now, this is 10, so this is 10, assuming you are right here. And then you need to go down 20. Take a left 20 again. Go up 20. So this is what you need to do. Very easy. 10, then 20, 20, and 20. 10, 20, 20, and then join them. Simple. Front view is almost done. Let me check. Yes, it is done. Okay, no need to worry. Now let's focus on the top view. In the top view, what you'll see is, sir, uh, this is first of all what we'll see is this. Okay. 20 by 15. 
then we'll see this right again 20 by 15 and then we'll also see this 20 by 15 so let me make this 20 by 15 20 by 15 20 by 15 done okay so now what <clears throat> these two lines separated by 10 millimeters again these two lines also separated by 10 millimeters let's implement agreed very easy now this one single edge will be visible clearly and let me make it done we are done with the top view we are done with the front view also now we just need to create the left hand side view what not the left hand side view but the sectional left hand side view okay. it's a special kind of a left hand side view so basically what we are doing is let's say we pass a section right and we take a look at it from over here okay let me say this is section 1 1 so i can also write this as section 1 1 right and let me have lines right you don't need to have lines from these two endpoints the reason being very simple even if you rotate them at an angle of 145 degrees you are still going to end up with the same vertical lines okay so let's say we are cutting it let's say this is your cutting plane this is the edge view of the cutting plane this is the edge view of the cutting plane isn't it and now we are looking at it from over here and you are creating the left hand side view okay so you'll see the section let me do that and uh, i think uh, the best way forward would be i have not included this in my animation it would have been better uh, make a center and then make a line this way okay please do it very very professionally let's call it as one one dash and then write one one dash over here right we are creating the section over here and we are taking a look at it from this arrow side and that is the sectional left hand side view let me complete this and uh, rotate upwards and from here also let me have the lines what will we see sir these two edges no sir we are actually passing a cutting plane somewhere along somewhere along this line isn't it we are passing a cutting plane so what we'll get to see is this uh something of this sort you're going to see a section and above the section you are going to see this portion also this is not a section but a portion that you will see and you are also going to see this edge over here once because after you pass a section through the center this portion has to be removed and then you have to visualize it how it looks okay so we can start with this and then uh, get a line down right uh, you can do the hatching or you can also make this edge and then do the hatching it's your choice done 8 minutes and 20 seconds done so now we are on to problem number 5th and let me just make a quick check if you just zoom in either you can solve problem 5th or 6th the choice is all yours now uh, the most important thing is I'll also be doing the solution for problem 6 don't worry okay uh, let me here it is problem number five and let me zoom in this is based on isometric drawing and as you can see it is of 16 marks <laughs> very beneficial if you can solve it correctly figure shows orthographic views of an object by first angle method of projection draw its isometric view and give all the dimensions wonderful so i won't be giving the dimensions at the end but i'll be creating the isometric drawing completely what is this sir it is an isometric view so therefore you have to use the true dimensions okay one is to one anyway how do you approach such questions especially when you have to make an isometric drawing first of all try to work out the overall length the width and the height of the object if you plan it carefully then you will be do, able to do this problem in uh, less than 30 minutes this is going to take time okay better to increase the speed of the video from the player settings down below now <clears throat> from the extreme left to the extreme right this semicircular profile over here this is 25 millimeters plus 75 so adding them up will give you 100 length is 100 secondly the width width is this 35 plus how much is this length sir it's not given uh how much is this sir this is the diameter so diameter is double the radius that is 50 so if the length is 100 the width is 50 
and you can see that the height also is the total height is is 50 now we are going to give the height in two stages in the first stage we are going to make this foundation on the platform that is 15 mm and then secondly these are the points which will be further lifted by a height of 35 so 35 plus 15 will make the total height as 50 okay here we go with the problem solution and here it is i just recorded the video in hindi so this is the solution and as you can see there are so many stages there is this entire timeline which is going to help you understand this isometric drawing very very nicely right and as you can see if i make the entire drawing over here it will become a complete masala complete confusion will be created so i don't want that i'll give you this timeline approach one by one but you guys have to do this in the same diagram only okay you've got no other option so make sure you start your work with a very very light pencil hold it very gently 3h pencil okay can we start here we go let me erase all of them and <clears throat> here is the orthographic drawing for which we'll be creating the isometric view okay now uh if you are making this drawing manually make sure that you've got this ready okay what is this if you just make the horizontal this is at an angle of 30 degrees this is also at an angle of 30 degrees these are what you call the isometric axis all of them are equally inclined to each other iso means equal what is that equal angle that happens to be 120 degrees okay between them 120 120 and 120 please make these set of axes as they are going to help you uh, orient of mini drafter accordingly secondly if you are doing this on uh, mm, just a second if you are doing this on autocad make sure that you switch on this polar tracking okay switch off switch on right and click on this down arrow make sure it is set to 30 60 90 okay so once that is done we can go ahead with the problem here we go <clears throat> how to start sir so we know that the length is 100 the width is 50 and the height is also 50 okay so uh where should we fix the length sir that is going to be a challenge for us so this length is 100 you can fix the length over here you also have the choice to fix the length over to this side as well it completely depends on your choice okay 100 which one would you choose sir uh what is the point that you're trying to make the point that i'm trying to make is if you select this as the length then the semicircular profile will be at the back somewhere here if you select this as the length then the semicircular profile since it is towards the right hand side it will be somewhere here so you will be able to visualize the object much more uh, confidently much more in a better way right so we are going to select this as the length and we are going to make an arrow over here so this arrow is going to represent our front on view okay so this is going to be for the what you call the width the width happens to be 50 let me erase this let me use the line command again and let me go for width here it is it is 50 done okay now uh, you just need to finish this this again move in this manner right now we are moving along this isometric axis okay this is how you need to continuously monitor your mini drafter this is 100 and back to where we start done okay let me control x control v <clears throat> sir one more thing to notice you see that there is this foundation of having a height of 15 so you can increase the height okay either you can lift all of these points above or you can go below also it's your choice 15 below and better to simply copy this co enter select the base point base point done done now you just need to join all of these points okay whatever i am doing on the computer screen you can replicate the same on a piece of paper no worries you just need a mini drafter that will help you immensely <coughs> Now what sir mm, i think it would be better if i can just copy this now we should go ahead and create this circles isometric view this is a perfect circle it's an orthographic projection that is why when you create the isometric view of a circle it looks like an ellipse right that is exactly what it is now uh, where is this center sir this is located at a distance of 25 millimeters 
this is a center for the circle as well as the semicircle. The circle is having a radius of 10. Since the diameter is 20, the radius is 10. And this semicircle is having a radius of 25. So remember, smaller one is the circle, radius is 10. The larger one is the semicircle, the radius is 25. Let's go for it. Here in this diagram. So somewhere along this line, you can locate the center. And it is in this direction, this distance is 25. Done? Okay. Here we will get the semicircle. Now, how do you make the semicircle? That is the first thing. <coughs> you know, the trick that I am going to make is, I am going to make a circle. Very light one, very light one. The diameter is, radius is going to be 10. Done? Now, watch, trim. I don't want this portion. Okay, I only want this portion. Extend, double end, enter. Okay. Now, I know this is the midpoint. Okay, I really need this point. Where is the 30 degree angle? Here it is. You can see the green line guidelines. Okay. Now you can use the trim command once again. Okay. And now you can use the extend command. Extend this line over to this side and we are almost done. What we have just accomplished is that we've created this plus. Okay. This plus is in orthographic and here we have created this plus in isometric and whenever you make any isometric drawing they happen to be parallel to the isometric axis right sir now what you need to do is to you need to create a circle an isometric circle is basically an ellipse how do you do that watch the steps this is going to be fun use the copy command base point is the center take it to this extreme left and extreme right again take this as the copy base point left right done now this is something something that i have already taught and uh, let's use this approach um looks like a rhombus isn't it which one is the smaller diagonal so this is the smaller diagonal so select the corners and corner with the midpoint of the opposite side corner midpoint of the opposite side repeat the same process Corner midpoint of the opposite two sides. Corner midpoint of the opposite two sides. Done. Now you can create the circle very easily. The centers are this is the center, that's the radius. If this is the center, this is the radius. If this is the center, this is the radius. If this is the center, this is the radius. Let me implement arc center. Let me start from over here. Click. Done. Arc center. Now let me take this as the center. This much is the radius and keep on rotating in the anti-clockwise sense until you reach here again arc center click click rotate until you reach here done arc center click click and here we go this is the isometric view of the circle now control c control v i'm following this timeline approach you guys have to do the entire drawing you can't copy or paste if you're doing this manually okay <laughs> all right uh now what to do uh i think better to get rid of this construction and, uh, yeah now what i'll do is uh i am going to create the semicircle over here how to do that use the extend command and i'm going to extend these lines okay I mean, this line is going to be, this is 25, that's 25, and that's 25. We already know that. Here, we need to create a semicircle. How do you do that? For that, uh, what I'll be doing is, I think uh, we should get rid of this, and uh, we should be extending this line, lengthen it along this direction by 25, enter, enter, and done. Now, let me take this line. Let me copy it with respect to the base. Copy it over here. We need to make the semicircle. How do you do that? Can I isolate this? I have to select all of them. Anyway, um, <clears throat> larger diagonal, smaller diagonal. Choose the smaller diagonals from the corners. Draw lines meeting the midpoint of the opposite two sides. Here we go.
now arc center and it's very easy now here you'll see the semicircle take this as the center this much as the radius and here you go what did i just do arc center center radius and move in the anti-clockwise direction until you reach here again arc center center this much is the radius a bigger radius relatively and here you go okay now let me copy this and i'll get rid of the construction and all let's let's very quickly do that Mm. <clears throat> let me use no let us keep it let me trim it <coughs> now what sir uh, the other thing that I would like to do is chip off chip off chip it off chip it off okay let me take this copy where is that point oh. this is 15 if I'm not wrong yes it is 15 this thickness is 15 now what you guys need to do is let me just give you a brief demonstration. What you guys really need to do is you need to create points from this periphery of the semicircle. You need to keep on making points. Just make points. I'll be making a line. You guys have to make points. 15 mm below. How do you do that? Let me show this to you. Keep on marking points this way. This way. This way. This way this way this way once you are done with that uh, now with the help of a pencil make pass a smooth curve through all of these points that curve is going to be parallel to this isn't it okay so let me just copy this let's say this is the base point here we go and we are almost done now now let me make my work look a bit professional we connect this okay we copy control c control v and <clears throat> zooming in again let me get rid of all of these lines all right line somewhere here 15 mm downwards no no, no not this way uh, 15 mm I mean, the point that I have selected to make this line is is almost on the right hand side, extreme right hand side of this curve. That is the point that you need to select. Okay, make your make sure your drafter is absolutely vertical. Bring it to this 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 portion, and the moment it becomes absolutely tangential to this curve, drop a line 15 mm below, and obviously it is going to cut here. That's for sure. Okay, let me erase this, and let me get this somewhere here okay looking much more professional so two circular profiles done one is still left and that's a semicircular one how do you approach that mm. <clears throat> let's see hmm. control c control v now uh you just need to remember you need to make this this is 10 by the way let me zoom out slightly look this is 50 in between this this diameter this is uh, radius is 15 so diameter is going to be 30 so we are left with 10 over to the left and 10 to the right so 10 30 10 okay 10 30 10 10 30 10 remember this is 35 again 10 30 10 this is 35 remember we'll work out this profile also it looks like a slide we'll implement it don't worry 10 30 10 remember and that's 35 here we go over to this side 10 30 10 and this is 35 by the way 
so let me just implement this this is 35 then on account of 10 then on account of uh, 30 and then again on account of 10 let me close it this is 35 obviously and now you can simply copy this copy at a distance of 10 this is at a distance of 30 and we are almost done okay now you need to give height to all of these points and for doing that let me make a copy again so that there is absolutely no confusion whatsoever now all of them are having a height of they are having a height of how much this height we have reached this point already we have given this height initial height of 15 and now the remaining height is 35 so all of them seem to be lifted by 35 millimeters how do you do that let me show this to you this way all the points just keep your scale over here and then make a point 35 mm above this way can you do this i'm sure you can uh, i'll rather copy you just need to make a point the lines are not needed really okay and if you're done with this join join again join again and uh, how do i join this <laughs> again let me make a copy uh, no before making a copy i think copy you have to do the same over top also now how do you approach now this is going to be a challenge Control c and Control v here we go now how do you approach the problem from over here first of all let me get rid of the unnecessary lines this one so is this one and and anything else what else hmm. Hmm. okay now mm, i need to make a semicircle over here again if you watch this profile there is this semicircle which you need to create on a vertical plane basically how do you do that the approach is very simple i think we should get rid of this also for now hmm. join the diameter is 30 you can see this take the center above 15 below 15 enter done i think we should get rid of this line also hmm? not to create any kind of confusion in your mind now what's the approach sir it's very simple uh, what we can do is we can just make the same line pass through this point and this point and uh, just join join no confusion no confusion let me get rid let me delete this line also i don't want any confusion whatsoever no confusion okay <clears throat> so far so good now this is the smaller diagonal square and then we can this is the corner point connect it with the opposite sides midpoint opposite sides midpoint smaller diagonal opposite sides midpoint and the opposite sides midpoint now you can did i do something wrong i know why am i feeling that i have done something wrong is this correct <laughs> just a second yes it is correct now let me show this to you this is going to be half of that semicircle and this is the remaining half arc center take this as the center this much is the radius now rotate until you reach here again repeat the same step arc center center radius and rotate wonderful <clears throat> we are done we are done now let me add some finishing touches to my diagram it is already 21 minutes 
okay i mean this is time taking if i was supposed to make a 3d model i would have done that in less than five minutes to be very honest but this isometric drawing is going to take some time remove this remove this line remove now try to copy this done now what to do sir <clears throat> one more is left here it is now watch all just like i mean all of these points are 35 mm behind also similarly all of these points from the semicircular profile will be three uh, will be 35 mm behind also so you just need to make points you don't have to make line i'll have to make the lines from here here at approximately regular intervals that will do the job for you okay and now it is you just need to pass a smooth curve through all of these points in sequence you need to stop here right don't go ahead so i'll simply make a copy this is the ninja technique that you guys need to follow done now when you are done with this again let me make a copy <coughs> Let me paste this. Okay. Let me get rid of all of them, in fact. I think we are pretty much done with the diagram. So, uh, whether the bottom, like this is the topmost portion of the hole, whether the bottom portion of the hole is going to be visible or not, let me, let me just demonstrate to you what I am asking. So, this is the top portion of the hole. Bottom of the hole will be like this whether this is visible or not in the isometric drawing that is first th that is the one thing that i would like to know okay let me get it back to the initial position right this is this is the 3d environment and that's why i can <laughs> tilt the object rotate it as per my wish right again let me go back to the drawing um the best way to know whether the bottom edge is going to be visible or not i'm calling it an edge although it's it's an arc select this extreme point the topmost extreme point how deep is this sir this is 15 mm depth okay 15 mm depth so enter and now you can see that this semicircular this this circular profile at the bottom even if you get all the points 15 mm below and when you join all of them the result that you are going to see is simply an this so you basically don't need to make this okay now that you have checked you don't need to make it okay sir that's the first thing and secondly if you watch uh, there is a slide over here i have not made the slide uh, let me see the question paper once again sir this slide okay starting from the topmost point the slide the width of the slide is 10 millimeters and then this is 20 okay so let me from this very point let me go 20 and then join here we go from this very point let me go along this direction 20 and then join at the top okay easy and then from here the width as i know it is 10 where is the guideline yes and then you need you can go over here in along this direction simply click okay you can trim this and then go to the top no no use the line command again and go to the top how high 35 millimeters done and again use the line command and join this is the complete slide now <clears throat> let me copy this again and let me add some final touches to my drawing we are done let me remove this mm. erase not erase use the trim command okay erase erase and we are done no 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 what have i just done get your line shorten it get rid of it and that's the final drawing now let's go for problem number six again this is going to be a 16 mark problem it is based on isometric drawing let me zoom in and let me see what has been given in the question figure shows the orthographic views of an object by first angle projection okay 
draw its isometric view that means you have to make the isometric drawing with respect to the true dimensions and give all the dimensions well i am not going to give the dimensions at the end you guys can do that what i am really interested in is creating the isometric view and i'll give you the step by step approach first of all take a careful look at this what is the length means from here to this point sir this is going to be 190 how sir this is 45 the radius yes then the distance between these two centers is 100 so total is 145 now and then this is also 45 sir you can clearly see that this is the center line so 45 and 45 right that that is how it will make 90 so 45 plus 100 plus 45 that is the total length that is 190 secondly uh we have been given the height this height is 15 and this is 30 so there are basically i mean there are going to be two different heights which you have to fit in your isometric drawing all of this can be accomplished the most important thing that you must note is this square hole over here can you see this dashed lines when do we use dashed lines sir when there is a hidden feature so something is hidden there is an edge which is hidden and which which basically indicates that this there is this square hole over here okay and so is this one that's 30 by 30 square this is a 40 by 40 square now how all of this can be implemented that is going to be our agenda and this is going to take around 20 to 30 minutes i want all of you to increase the speed of the video from the player settings please go ahead and do that from left to the right end 190 the width happens to be sir this is 45 that's 45 the width is 90 how 190 by 90 right that is how you are going to approach and let me show you uh, my approach go is going to be absolutely stepwise okay because if i start creating the entire drawing over here so there is going to be a lot of construction you guys may get confused so i am going to give you this timeline approach wherein i'll do some construction i'll do some work and then copy it again okay again i'll do modifications copy it again again do modifications and in this manner we'll finish the entire drawing make sure whenever you are making an isometric drawing uh use a very very light pencil hold it very lightly 3h pencil to be precise shall we proceed here we go let me erase all of these things as decided 190 is the length width is 90 the height has to be given in two stages okay uh, there is a platform which has a height of 15 then there is another which has a height of 30 take a look it's a very interesting case and uh, whenever you make any isometric drawing please make sure that you have got these isometric axis ready okay whenever i say that draw a line either that line will be parallel to this isometric axis or this one or this vertical okay left right left right top bottom that's the only way or these are the only options uh, of making or creating lines let me start line command and by the way all of this can be implemented implemented manually on your drawing sheet i'm doing the same on a virtual screen right now so don't you worry click anywhere on the screen now move at an angle of 30 degrees okay you can see this line that i have this green color line is absolutely parallel to this over here right one nine zero done uh, please switch on this polar tracking let me show this to you once again there is this polar tracking inside the option if you see i have set it at an angle of 30 60 90 120 okay so basically i will be working at angle of 30 150 degrees and so on and so, okay don't worry uh in order to switch it on what you need to do is if i click on it nothing will happen if i click on it again it gets activated blue color all right so this is 190 you need to make another line this is the width how much is the width it's 90 then over here this way again 190 this way automatically it will be closing out control x control v let me make the drawing here now how shall we proceed again if you watch uh, i think it would be better if we can create the top view first and then gradually we'll be giving the heights okay so there are two profiles in the top view one is the circular profile and while the other profile is this sort of u shaped and then the uh, semicircle over here right so how to approach i think the best way forward is to create this circle first and then the semicircle and then we'll see what happens okay 
to make this circle you first of all need to locate this center where is this center sir in fact both these centers from the left the distance is 45 you can see this and here also this center is at a distance of 45 from the right most part or right most face of this object so 45 from either ends what you can do is you can locate the center of this particular edge over here this is where the center is okay half of 90 one sec locate the center and then move along this direction how much sir this is 45 enter done okay sir now this distance also has to be 45 again locate the center in and in this direction 45 and enter again you've got the centers what you now need to do is with the help of this center you need to create a circle now this is the orthographic projection and you can clearly see the circle it's an actual circle but uh, as far as the isometric view of a circle is concerned it would look like an ellipse what is the radius it is having sir it is having a radius of 45 okay agreed yes and what about this semicircle this is also having a radius of 45 so what i'll do is click copy paste point okay so what i have done is basically this is still the center 45 front 45 at the back 45 to the right 45 to the left this way this way okay this way 45 let me extend this ex double enter select this automatically yes 45 45 45 45 so uh, we can now successfully go ahead and create our circle let me select them and i have to also make a line again use the copy command use this as the center click done in fact some of the universities have already started this entire curriculum of teaching engineering drawing with the help of software and the widely used or I mean mostly recommended software is AutoCAD okay I'm the using the AutoCAD 2018 version so uh, if you guys want to make this on this virtual environment start learning AutoCAD okay now this is the larger diagonal this is the smaller diagonal I use this approach right and take a look at the smaller diagonal corner and the opposite end this is the end opposite right this is the opposite side and then it's center enter again corner and the opposite sides center click again corner opposite sides center again corner opposite sides center done now you can create a circle what are the centers sir this is the center that's the center they, these two are also the centers arc center and start with this as the center this much as the radius rotating the anticlockwise and there you go again arc center take this as the center this much as the radius a bigger arc bigger radii there you go this is how easy it is again arc center center radius all of these things can be implemented manually on a drawing sheet i am doing this on a computer screen don't worry but the world is going to change very very soon i can see that and people are going to move from manual drafting to computer aided drafting in the next five years so better to keep an edge okay all right so that's done sir what else what about this semicircle? okay can be made first of all let me make a line passing through this point absolutely along along this line okay let me do that use the copy command center click and okay do the same close it down wonderful you need to apply the same process again if you even if you apply the same process i mean the construction will remain same you are going to eventually end up let me just show this to you you are going to end up because it, here also you need to apply the same construction techniques okay no no difference whatsoever i'll simply copy this entire construction i'll paste it over here 
right so what we need we need only this much portion if you watch carefully we need the circular semicircular portion so i'm going to ship it off ship it off that's what i need now let me copy this let's move ahead in the timeline this is what we've done and i am going to erase uh, some construction so that you guys can visualize it properly delete 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 and okay <clears throat> now uh, i mean what are the boundaries so you don't have to extend this line you don't have want to have this line either so what i'll do is i'm going to chip it off again make sure that you create this drawing within with the help of uh ph pencil so that all the work is very very light okay let me copy this again and now let me start with the modification process okay the first thing that you need to observe is that this circular profile over here is having a height of 30 and then there is this profile the sort of semicircle here semicircle here and then these straight lines this will be lifted uh, by a height of 15 so this is 15 and that's 30 so let me do this so through all of these points you need to keep your mini drafter absolutely vertical okay or in the horizontal vertical position and then you need to take any point and then give it a height of 30 3 0 and enter can you do this easy okay let me copy this paste paste you guys don't have to make these lines i am going to make these lines because points are not visible on the screen okay how high all of these points are 30 millimeter or are at a height of 30 millimeters from this circumference right and then with the help of a pencil you can join all of these points in proper sequence in order to have a smooth curve which eventually is going to look something like this let me copy paste here we go wonderful in the same fashion uh, this portion also has to be given a height of 15 millimeters let us do that and uh, one more thing uh, if you watch let me go back here also we'll see a circle only some portion of the circle will be visible to us right so we need to keep that in mind as well just a sec so take the midpoint of all of these lines right just a sec let me explain copy center 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 here is the center okay okay so far so good all right this profile over here has to be given a height of 15 so we can do that very easily um what we basically need to do is i think it would be better if i can make a line over here this is at a height of 15 1 5 enter done okay select 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 i can do the selection process if you're doing it on autocad follow my steps if you're not on autocad what you can do is uh, keep on making points yeah 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 i mean at regular intervals approximately and then join all of these points in proper sequence you are going to have the same profile lifted by a height of 15 okay now this is how you do it and now let me repeat the process copy base point paste now we copy this again control c control v okay now take a look delete 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 
delete delete that's not needed uh, let me this is not needed either this isn't needed trim okay select done done looking good i'm chipping off the portions basically nothing else this is not needed not needed not needed make sure your initial drawing is very very light kept very very light shift is the tangent approach okay looking good let me chip off this portion also we are basically fine tuning our drawing nothing else okay anything else i think we should need to remove this portion also looking good now anything else this let me copy this okay now it's looking good now and let me chip off this portion also very slightly looking good now all the edges have been smoothened out okay now the only thing left are these circular not circular but square profiles so you first of all need to make them but how how do you make the isometric view of a square which here you can clearly see it is at a certain angle the square is not horizontal right it has been kept at a certain angle let's say 45 degrees okay how do you make this so you can say sir uh, we already have the centers and we just need to know what this distance is how will you calculate this distance sir we can use trigonometry this angle over here as 45 degrees so this is going to be 40 cos 45 that's 40 sin 45 but your engineering graphics teacher may argue that uh, this is not the right way he may put forward an argument that you are doing or you are taking the help of mathematics don't do that what you can do is basically make the orthographic projection of this square 40 by 40 and then from there the dimensions the two dimensions can be taken and fitted in this isometric view let me show this to you what i'll do now is make two squares one 40 by 40 other is 30 by 30 let's do it okay again we need to make a copy Control C and Control V. Okay. <sighs> if you watch, you 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 sort of know this. This is forty five from the left, forty five from the right. Again. Okay, you already have this point, right? In the construction, this is the point you have. So, uh, you guys <laughs> may get into trouble if you don't do your work i mean with a lighter pencil okay so make sure that you follow all the instructions carefully so 45 from over here and 45 from over here let me demonstrate 45 from this side enter and again 45 from this side where is that point right and this is where the exact location where the center of that square is going to be so first of all create two squares orthographic projections let me do that line command and uh, over here you can just make a rough drop drawing at the rate 45 angle no 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 why at the rate at the rate of 30 first of all angle 45 again at the rate 30 angle minus 45 again 
एट द रेट थर्टी एंगल माइनस वन थर्टी फाइव एंड ज्वाइन फाइनली नाउ यू नीड टू मेक अनदर स्क्वायर यो एट द रेट फोर्टी एंगल फोर्टी फाइव एट द रेट फोर्टी एंगल माइनस फोर्टी फाइव एट द रेट फोर्टी एंगल माइनस वन थर्टी फाइव डन ऑल राइट प्लीज डू दी कंस्ट्रक्शन इन दिस फैशन ओके गुड टू गो नाउ वॉट्स फॉलो द स्टेप्स दिस इज द ऑर्थोग्राफिक प्रोजेक्शन ऑफ दी स्क्वेयर्स यू नीड टू क्रिएट दियर आइसोमेट्रिक प्रोजेक्शन विद विद दिस पर्टिकुलर पॉइंट एज दी सेंटर हाउ डू यू इंप्लीमेंट दिस वॉट वी कैन डू इज मेक श्योर इफ यू आर ड्रॉइंग दिस मैनुअली मेक श्योर यू हैव अ कॉम्पस ओके Keep one leg of your compass over here, other leg over here, with this much as the radius. Now what we'll do is, this is the there is this thirty mm square over here. Fit it, done, done, sir. Do the same over here as well. Again, use this one spin, uh, one leg over here, other leg over here, with this much as the radius. Now let me move this. This is the center. Here we go, sir. Where are we going with this? We were supposed to create two squares. One was forty by forty, while the other was thirty by thirty. What are you doing, sir? Why are you making these circles? Well, these are my reference. Let me show this to you very quickly. So, uh, trim, trim, uh, extend, double enter, extend, um, trim, trim, extend, double enter, uh, 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 uh. Extend double enter, done. Double enter, done. Now let me rotate these lines. You can you can create your own lines also, no problem. From here also along this direction, okay. Along this direction, this direction, this direction. I am talking about. <laughs> okay. What I'll do is, let me use a smarter approach. Control C, Control V. and uh, let me rotate this ro okay base point let me select the center as the base point 120 degrees right again now move with respect to the center bring it to the center and done right now when this is done I remove the circle or you can keep the circle also it is your choice no problem uh um, need to repeat the same let me copy this with respect to the center This will go beyond the circle. I mean, as expected. Okay. Use the trim command again. Chip off these portions and then remove the circle also. Now what, sir? Now you can simply join all of these corner points. We have created the isometric view of these squares successfully now. Okay. And now let me copy. Control C, Control V. Now what you can do is, let me remove the inside portion. Again, if you watch, these two square profiles, they are holes, right? And uh, here the depth is thirty, and here the depth is fifteen. So they have to be taken into account. I don't know whether the bottom portion is going to be visible or not, but let's let's check it out. Why not? so all of these corner points will go down by a distance of 30 and here all of them will go down by a distance of 15 true yes sir let me do that click at the rate this is going to go down by a distance of 30 enter and let me copy this i mean you don't have to make a line you simply need to mark points 30 mm below through all of these corners okay now let me make a copy copy no nothing is going to happen students 
use the line command again these are the two points then there is this point the bottom edge won't be visible to you okay the bottom edge won't be visible to you if you don't believe me let me show you through this sketch until and unless this is the perfect isometric right you don't i mean this is the 3d environment this is the 2d environment this is the 3d environment okay this portion is not visible this wall is visible some portion of the wall is visible and let me show this to you once again here it will be visible here it is not going to be visible so uh you don't have to worry i think i would even suggest you to delete done this portion is done what about this portion you can make a check very quick check so uh, we can do this 15 mm below copy now sir some portion is going to be visible now you can make an argument with me okay let me join all of the bottom four corners where is that point here it is here it is and here it is this portion is going to be visible and as you can see it's here is the valley validation right and we we are done we are done right it's done this is how the final drawing is going to look like i hope that this problem has helped you understand the concept of isometric drawings all of this has been done with the help of true scale that means one is to one no changes in length whatsoever everything has been maintained properly seventh problem this is going to be fun watch here we go and by the way there is an option either you can go for problem number seven or problem number eight as a teacher since i'm making the solution i don't have any option okay so let me go for problem number seven first of all right and uh, this is for 10 marks and let me tell you very honestly you can crack this you can make the entire drawing in less than 20 minutes to be very very honest very very comfortably this is based on a hexagonal pyramid whereas the last problem is based on a pentagonal prism now given a choice you should go for problems which are based on the parallel line method because they're relatively easier than the radial method okay then the radial development should i say this uh in radial development you've got cone you've got pyramid whereas uh, in case of parallel line development you've got a prism and cylinder so they are relatively easier to construct okay all right let me read the question first so there happens to be a hexagonal pyramid of base 30 mm and axis 75 mm 30 75 remember resting on hp it is resting on hp with side of the base parallel to vp side of the base parallel to vp it is cut by a section plane perpendicular to the vp and inclined at 45 degree to the hp and also bisecting the axis of the pyramid draw the development of the lateral surface of the pyramid wonderful let me take you to the solution and here we go the first thing is there is a hexagonal pyramid the base is 30 mm where is the base sir this is the base how many sides are there sir there are as many as six sides why sir because it is a hexagonal pyramid that's the reason secondly the axis height is 75 sir where can we see the side here it is right from the topmost point that is the apex to the center of the hexagon this height is the axis height of the pyramid you can say or is the uh, or this may also be referred to as the axis length right that is 75 and this over here is 30 where is it resting sir it is resting on hp with its base on hp now you need to imagine if this is resting with its base on hp from where will you be able to see the true shape of the base from where you will you be able to see the true shape of the base that it can be seen from the top therefore you have to begin with the top view okay and in the top view you are going to obviously see the hexagon i will show you three different top views please please 
select the option which is correct one two and three which one would you choose and which ones will you reject with proper justification sir we've been asked uh, to make sure that the hexagonal parameter is resting with its base on hp yes with a side base side parallel to vpa if you watch carefully in this diagram in option one these two base sides they are actually parallel to the vertical plane okay since they are parallel to xy that's why they are parallel to vp that's the idea but sir in this case in option number two sir this is one of the base side is perpendicular to the xy line that means it is perpendicular to vp sir this also happens to be inclined this also happens to be inclined this is again perpendicular so rejecting we have to accept this the reason being very simple base has been kept parallel to vp and here there is some kind of inclination there is some kind of inclination with xy or with the vertical plane this is alpha this also has got to be alpha this also has got to be alpha and about as far as these are concerned uh, these and then uh, if you can extend this you can extend this i mean all of these edges they are making some angle with the xy line which means that they are making some angle with the vertical plane okay only the base edges only the base edges anyway so we are going to go with option number one this is how you need to start your diagram please remember all the sides of the base are 30 millimeters in dimension let's go for it start by creating a simple hexagon this way okay name these corners are one two three four five six join one with four uh, three with six and five with two this is your apex or top view of the apex you can say now let's take a look at this arrangement from the front this is how it goes and if this is one this has got to be one dash two and six are on the same line right so we can call this two dash and also six dash let me write this way properly then your axis length is 75 millimeters so draw a line in the form of axis remember dash dot dash dot done connect these points to the apex so what you have just done is this 1 o that is 1 dash o dash in front view 2 o in top view 2 dash o dash in front view this way i hope this is clear to everyone okay secondly we also have been given information regarding the section plane and the section plane is such let me give you a uh, section plane is such that it is perpendicular to the vertical plane but at the same time it is inclined to hp and the angle of inclination has been given as 45 degree so let me just give you a brief idea as to how the section plane has been oriented okay now just take a look at this just a second okay now take a look at this mm, let's say this is the section plane with which we are going to cut this pyramid okay now if i keep it like this what is going to be your definition so right now as far as we can see it is parallel to hp but if we consider your face as the vertical plane then it appears as if this is perpendicular to vp okay perpendicular to vp now sir it is still perpendicular to vp but inclined at a certain angle to hp this angle has been given to you how much is this angle sir that is 45 degrees so when you guys are looking at this from the front this is the edge view of the cutting plane edge view of the section plane whatever you may call it correct okay so now you have to create a cutting plane or a section plane over here and this section plane is such that it is bisecting this axis so the axis length was 75 so this distance is going to be half of 75 that is 37.5 and 37.5 done okay so this can be done very easily let me just give you one more example you can keep your protractor over here keep it like this then at an angle of 45 degree make a point small dot and then pass a line through it again since this is a section plane so there are certain rules that you guys need to follow take a careful look the part of the cutting plane which comes inside the hollow solid keep it headed keep it i mean thin and the part which is outside keep it thick okay there should be a clear cut difference between both okay sir so far so good now what 
Now, if you watch this, there is only one slantage over here. Agreed, sir. So there is going to be one cutting point. This has got to be A dash. Sir, there are as many as two slantages over here. Name them. Sir, one is O dash, two dash, while the other is O dash, six dash. O2 is at the front and O6 is at the back. Sir, there are going to be as many as two cutting points. One of them is going to be B dash, while the other is going to be C dash. So what we'll do is I'll simply write them down A dash. Okay. I've projected all of these points down below. Don't worry. This is A dash, B dash, C dash, A dash is here. Similarly, this is B dash, B. This is C dash, that's C. Similarly, this is D dash and E. So D is over here and that's E and that's F. Okay. Now you can join all of them, right? Please don't hatch this portion. You don't need that. Uh, what we're interested in is creating the development and development is created from the front view. Uh, there, I mean, uh, you just need to focus here on the front view only, right? Wherever the top view references is required, I'll let you know. Draw straight line from O dash. Let's say this point is O. Now you need to decide which slant edge over here is giving you the true length. Okay. The axis length has been given to you as 75. But do you have any information about the slant edges? No, sir. You need that information. How will you extract that information from this drawing? Let me tell you. Observe which slant edge. 06, 05, 04, all of these are slant edges. Please observe which slant edge is parallel to XY. Sir, 02 is inclined, 03 is inclined, 05, 06. All of them are out of the picture. Sir, only 01 is parallel to XY. And also O4 is also parallel to XY. So if these two slant edges are parallel to XY, indirectly, I can say that they are parallel to vertical plane. Can I? Yes. Okay. So whenever you see a line's top view parallel, I mean, what are all of these? These are lines. If the top view of a line is parallel to the VP, that means its front view is going to show the true length. This is the true length. This also is the true length. Right? Now what you need to do is take a compass. Hmm? Round, keep pencil leg at one dash, steel end over here. Now with O as the center, cut an arc like this, right? Now what to do? Listen to this. Once you've made the arc, the next thing to do is watch. Let's say this is one. Okay, now, uh, <clears throat> how much is the distance between 1 and 2? Sir, uh, it is 30 millimeters, right? So you can keep your compass also over here. Then with 1 as the center, you can cut an arc. This is going to be 2. Similarly, the distance between 2 and 3 is again 30. So you can take 2 as the center, cut an arc again. That's 3, 4, 5, 6, and back to 1. Okay, agreed? Now, 1 and 2, there is a straight line connecting 1 and 2. It's a straight edge. Okay, it's not like a cone. Then 2 and 3, again a straight line. Then 3 and 4, again a straight line. Join all of these points this way. Easy. Okay. Now, if you open a pyramid, what do you see? Sir, we can see uh, triangular faces. So, here, this being a hexagonal pyramid, there are going to be as many as 6 triangular faces. So connect 2 with O, 3 with O and so on. Can you see 6 triangular faces? Yes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Done. Now the time has arrived to shift all of these points over to the development. This can be done very, very easily. Let me show this to you. Uh, take a look. <clears throat> Question number 1. Is A dash on the true length of the slantage? Yes. Why? Because this is because the top view is parallel to xy okay so since o dash 1 dash being a true length you can directly take this measurement okay you can directly take this distance uh, as radius in your compass and then with o as the center you can cut an arc since this is o dash 1 dash and this point is a dash so you can cut an arc over here and here this is going to give you point a done now these two points b and c these two points, D and E, they don't happen to be lying on the true length. 
so what you will do is you are going to shift them over to this side let's call them b1 dash also c1 dash now take this much as the radius in your compass where are these two points sir one is on two and the other is on six so cut two arcs along o2 and along o6 so you've got b and c simple now shift this over to this side okay here we go this way with os center cut these two arcs done okay and finally you've got this point f dash sir this already is on the true length you don't have to worry about this so with this much as the radius and with os center cut an arc that's going to give you point f and now join all of these points in proper sequence and uh, what you have what you have is a beautiful development and i know that uh, if you create this drawing this will not suffice uh, to give you full marks what you need to do is you need to make sure that your pencil work is very light like this okay and wherever the development is that has to be kept dark this is how you need to approach it and also the dimensions are missing missing and uh, let me put the dimensions in this fashion one dimension which i forgot was this one there was no direct information but it was given in the question that the cutting plane is going to bisect the axis into two parts okay so this has to be given as 37.5 done and yeah we are pretty much done since this is a hollow solid the actual diagram would look something like this this is in color you don't have to do this this is uh, just my own curiosity this is how it would look no need to do the hatching over here okay since this is a hollow solid there's nothing inside it okay only the faces right this is ex exactly how you need to approach such questions on development let's read the final problem and it is based on development of surface of hollow solids here we go a pentagonal prism side of base is 30 mm and axis 60 mm long is kept on hp kept on hp about what with respect to its base on HP or with respect to its face on HP. I mean, whenever you give any question, I mean, there has to be clarity. Okay. Okay. I'm assuming that it is, it has been kept with respect to its base. The base is pentagonal shape on HP. Okay. That's what I am assuming. Okay. In such a way that one of the base edges is parallel to the VP. All right. And near to the observer. It is near to the observer. Please take a note of this. A cutting plane bisects its axis at 45 degree. Draw the development of lateral surfaces of the pentagonal prism. Wonderful. Let me take you to the solution. And here it is. Let's take a look at this. First of all, let me make these edges. This. This way. This way. Please this is the pentagonal top and this over here is the pentagonal base agreed yes sir this pentagonal base or about this pentagonal base the prism is resting on hp agreed yes sir from where let me zoom into this from where can you see this pentagonal base sir obviously from the top okay or from which view front top or side view from which view can you see the true shape of the base Sir, the true shape of the base can only be seen from the top. Therefore, you have to begin by creating the top view first. Now, let me give you three options. These are the three options. Which top view is the correct? Correct one according to the problem description. That is what you need to decide first. Okay. And only then you can go ahead with the front view. Sir, uh, uh, as we can see that uh, it's been clearly written that one of the base edges is parallel to the VP. So, if the base edge is parallel to the VP, that means it is going to be parallel to the xy line. Sir, so here we can clearly see that there is this base edge over here, which is parallel to the xy line. But sir, uh, we've got also one more option. Here also the base edge happens to be parallel to the xy line. So we can say that both the options are correct, sir. No, both the options are not correct. Because something else additional has been written. Nearer to the observer. All of us are viewing the object from over here. Isn't it? which or in which diagram in which view can you see the base edge nearer to the observer sir here it is nearer to the observer here it is farther away from the observer therefore you are going to go with this option and you are going to discard 
in this option right now i'm sure you've understood which top view has to be created first and the justification behind it here we go let me let me start by creating this top view okay i have named the bottom five corners of the base as one two three four five i have left the top five corners as it is at it is going to be chipped up i'll show you after the section take a look for the front view let me extend the lines from all of these corners so this has got to be one dash this has got to be this is two dash this is going to be five dash this is three dash and four dash i'm sure you know this as far as this length is concerned it's a regular pentagon all the sides are equal 30 millimeters done yes sir now what sir the height of the pentagon happens to be 60 so give the height close it okay so far so good now as far as the cutting plane is concerned what you need to do is you need to make a point over here mm, just a second over here right at the center because it has been clearly stated the cutting plane bisects the axis that means it is going to divide the axis into two equal halves 30 30 each and the bisection will happen at 45 degrees so we are going to be implementing these things very very carefully so keep your protractor over here and then at an angle of 45 degree mark our point and this way you need to make your cutting plane done please note that uh, the portion of the cutting plane inside the solid thin the portion of the cutting plane outside the solid it's uh, thick okay now you need to decide where are those cutting points if you watch carefully this is the cutting point just about one okay so this let's let's call it as a dash similarly this is a cutting point just above two let me call this as b dash in the same fashion we have got c dash a dash and e dash okay a happens to be above one b happens to be above two and so on c is above three four is or d is above four and e is above five right now the front and top views are complete no there is no additional information that you have to give you just need to make the development how to do that first of all draw a horizontal line and then do this so what have we just done simply make a point simply name it as one and then you need to mark these points at distances of 30 30 again 30 again 30 again 30 even you can do the dimensions in this fashion 30 cross 5 is equal to 150 that is the total length of the developed prism agreed yes and from over here all of these points you need to draw vertical lines all of these vertical lines are having a magnitude of 60 done sir now what now with the help of a mini drafter keep it absolutely horizontal uh, draw horizontal lines through a dash through p dash and so on now sir a dash is above one or one dash so here in the development this is going to be a this is going to be a in the same fashion above two we've got point b so point b is going to be somewhere here in the same fashion sir c is above three you can see this c is above three so oh, d is above four here it is that's d for you and that's e here it is now simply join all the points in proper sequence with the help of straight lines okay and yeah that's the development if you want your work to look more professional make sure that you draw the entire stuff initially with the help of a 4 edge pencil and then you can overwrite with the help of an edge pencil and it should look something like this wonderful okay <laughs> now as far as the dimensions are concerned please note that uh, this is 30 and that's 60 and this cutting plane or section plane is making an angle of 45 degrees okay yeah that's it and uh, let me do the coloring just for fun just for the thumbnail okay 